your deep sky images could be clearer with one of these. In this video, that's what we're going to be looking at. Thank you to SV Boney for sending me their SV-238 of Axis Guider. You can check it out and the SV-226P filter draw in the link below. This is an off-axis guider, and I've been using an off-axis guider on my setups for about five years. For me, they are perfect, but you might be wondering why use an off-axis guider when I could just use a mini guide scope? It's been working perfectly fine for me. Well, this is why. You've probably started your deep sky journey by not guiding at all or by using a mini guide scope like the 32mm guide scope I have here. It's small, easy to use and gets you going. So why would you want to swap out a perfectly good guide scope for an off-axis guider? Well, first we need to quickly talk about what guiding is and how it works. Your telescope mount is staring into the darkness of space and trying to carefully very precisely counteract the rotation of the Earth at a very specific speed. However, pretty much no mount is perfect and it can have small imperfections in the hardware. So, the mount needs a little help in making sure it doesn't drift out of sync with that special rotation speed that matches our planet and keeps us locked onto our target. This is where guiding comes in. It's basically like a guide dog for your telescope, it keeps you on track so your data is as good as it can possibly be, without the need to feed or walk it each day. Guide software looks at a patch of stars and locks onto one or multiple stars. It looks for any movement or errors in the mount's tracking and corrects for it. It does this by sending a small electric pulse to the mount to nudge it back on track. This is known as pulse guiding. Accuracy of this guiding is important though, we don't want any false positives. A guide setup should only send corrections for errors in your mount and not anything else. It also needs to be able to detect these errors. If you use a too small of a guide scope and a long focal length telescope, your telescope might be magnified enough to see the errors and cause your stars to become right shaped. But your little guide scope doesn't because the focal length is too short and lacks magnification to see these errors. You could add a larger telescope to use for guiding, but that gets expensive and heavy. These problems rear their ugly heads when you start using longer focal length telescope setups or ones with flexure like a Newtonian. It also can be a balance problem. Balance can throw off how good your tracking is on your mount and you may be weight limited and cannot add a larger guide scope. An off-axis guide setup can solve all these issues. So, now you know why it's important to have good guiding and the issues a guide scope can have. You can see the perks of an off-axis guider. If, like me, you don't like spending loads of money, then this off-axis guider I have here may be the perfect option for you. You can probably see the perks of using an off-axis guider over a guide scope. There is one drawback though of an off-axis guider. Because of where it mounts in between your telescope and your camera, you're going to be using up some of that backspacing that is quite valuable. So if you're a monochrome user, just double check you have enough backspacing so you can fit it in place. And if you're using a one-shot colour camera, you'll probably have more than enough backspacing. This off-axis guider, as you can see, mounts to my filter wheel, but you're probably wondering if you're a one-shot colour user using a filter drawer, how are you going to mount it? Because it has a bolt pattern and no threading. Well, I had on my phone right here a load of notes about to talk about why you won't be able to do it until they release their new filter drop. Well, SV Boney have kindly sent me the filter drop so I can show you how to get hooked up really simply and easy. I requested this filter drop from SV Boney. As I was doing this off-axis guided video, I thought it was really unfair just to show how to do it on a monochrome setup. So for you one short colour camera users, this is how you're going to do it. And this filter drawer is really good value for money. I think right now it retails for £43, which is considerably lower than the competition. And it comes with an extra filter drawer, which is amazing for the value. So here is the off axis guider. I have already unboxed and used this, so any marks you see are from me using it. It was pristine when it arrived. It comes with an M54 to M42 adapter, the bolt pattern to attach to a filter drawer or filter wheel. Really important note here, this isn't threaded, so you will need a compatible drawer and filter wheel. 
has a large 14 by 8 mm prism. This comes standard with a helical focuser, which is really nice, and has a compression clamp with two thumb screws, which come in the box. An M48 adapter plate is included, so you have M42, M48, and M54 options right out of the box, which is awesome. These plates have a squishy foam to make sure there is no light leaks. It also comes with a little manual, which is good to see. It's sadly rare, even on some really premium products in the astronomy industry, to get a manual. Here's the eagerly awaited SV226P filter drawer. I'm immediately going to address this. Yes, you do need this filter drawer if you're going to use it on a one-shot color camera, but when you take a step back, ZWO's M48 off-axis guider, the off-axis guider version 2, with the added helical optional focuser, is more expensive than the off-axis guider and filter drawer combined. Yes. So you can get this off-axis guider and the filter draw cheaper than ZWA's off-axis guider, which makes this incredible value for money, especially with the included extra filter draw this comes with. I've used both setups and so far the SV Bony equipment is just built better. Stronger magnets, tighter sealing against light leaks and rigid mounting. I'd like to see slightly smaller branding on the side only because it looks like a wall of text when orientated together. This helical focuser is also noticeably better than the ZW option. When mounting the filter drawer just make sure you rotate it so that you can remove the drawer once the off-axis guider is mounted, otherwise it will hit the helical focuser. When tightening the bolts down, just make sure you do it in a star pattern to keep things flat. We don't want to introduce any tilt, if possible, into our setup. The magnets are really quite strong on the filter door, so I have no concerns about it falling out, unlike the ZW filter door, which has much weaker magnets. You can undo the little thumb screw on the sides to adjust the height of the prism. You want it high enough so it doesn't block the imaging sensor, but low enough so it is in the light path. On telescopes with smaller M42 threaded backs, you just want to be careful. A larger imaging circle telescope will have no issues. I'm using this with my 290 mini camera. I've been using this for around six years, so I'm very familiar with the performance as a guide camera. Make sure to orientate the sensor with the horizontal opening of the prism and slide the camera in. The top of the helical focuser also has M42 threads, so if you want to thread on a non-mini guide camera, you can there. Here I've attached my 5 through 3 MC Pro color camera. Be aware of the backspacing to make sure it works in your imaging train. The off-axis guider is 17.5mm with the adapter plate and the filter drawer is 21mm. This leaves you with 16.5mm. The 5-3 has 6.5mm backspacing on the camera so I've added a 10mm spacer to give us the necessary 55mm total. Just make sure what backspacing your camera has, most are 6.5mm or 175 You can also add a 1mm spacer to reach 56mm on a colour camera, as adding a filter wheel to the light path, you usually want to add around 1mm. Lots of good details, especially when you consider this is a £115 off-axis guider. But if you use the link below before December 31st, you can save 5% using the code on screen or in the description below. So make sure you save a bit of extra cash when you buy the off-axis guider. And while we're talking about off-axis guiders, we need to talk about ZWO's Air version cameras. They have a built-in guide camera. This is not off-axis guiding, this is on-axis guiding. As you can see, there is the imaging sensor and up here is the guide sensor. This is on axis because all the light is going the same way. Off axis guiding reflects it back up, so it's off axis. This isn't quite the same thing and this has its own drawbacks, which you're going to see in a future video with that telescope I have behind me. So if you're interested in seeing my thoughts about this camera paired with the amazing scope I have behind me, feel free to hit that subscribe button below so you don't miss out on those future videos. I've got the off-axis guider prism adjusted and I think I'm ready to go for tonight's imaging session. Things should go smoothly because I'm using the same camera in the off-axis guider I normally use and have used for the last four to five years, which is the ZWO290 monochrome. This is a little mini camera so it slides into the off-axis guider helical focuser nicely. I love how robust this off-axis guider feels connected to everything and I'm really, really happy with it so far. Anyway, I'm going to get inside, get nice and warm, maybe have a bit of food, and then get ready for tonight's imaging session. I'll see you in a bit. So it's finally dark and it's time to get the off-axis guider focused. This is one of the things people can find really difficult with an off-axis guider if they're not used to one. But there's one critical thing you need to do in the right order to get it in focus. 
You need to make sure your imaging main telescope is focused before you try and focus the off-axis guider. If you try and focus the off-axis guider before you focus your imaging telescope, you can have a nightmare because when you go to focus your main telescope, your off-axis guider is now going to go out of focus. So the order you need to do things is make sure your prism is in the right position for your sensor, focus your main telescope, your imaging telescope, and then focus your off-axis guider. So we're gonna do that now, and it's super easy to do because of the helical focus app. That makes life so much easier. I cannot tell you how hard it is to do focusing when you don't have one, you have to move the camera in and out. That's really difficult. So we're gonna do that now, and I'll show you how easy it is to do. So here is the off-axis guider helical focus app. It's really nice and smooth and really easy to adjust. We can see the live view inside of PHD and we can see the stars are out of focus. So we need to adjust the helical focuser and get them better in focus. I'm just gonna slowly turn it and get it so the stars get smaller and smaller. This will be easier to do with a shorter looped exposure, but I'm just gonna keep them, uh, keep the looped exposure the same as I usually use when I actually do my imaging. Just a little bit more. For guiding, your stars do not need to be perfectly in focus, and that's something to remember. So don't stress too much about getting absolutely perfect focus. So that looks a lot better than it was, and I'm really happy. The helical focus is super easy to use, as you can see, nice and smooth, which makes getting precise focus on your guide stars really easy. As you can see, getting focus is really quite easy and there's nothing to be worried about. An off-axis guider, once you've got it set up, you won't have to really adjust afterwards. I've kept my off-axis guider in the same focus for almost five years to give you an idea. They're super stable. As long as you don't keep adjusting your setup and changing cameras and things out, you really won't have to ever adjust it. Remember to remove the plastic film, get your prism adjusted so it doesn't go in front of the light path of your sensor, get it bolted on, get your main imaging telescope focused, and then your off-axis guider. Really simple, and I think anyone can fit an off-axis guider. If you're liking this video and finding the information helpful and you like astronomy, feel free to subscribe and hit that like button. It helps me out, every single view counts, and I really do appreciate it. Anyway, I'm gonna get inside. You can probably see from my breath, it's very cold outside. My Pegasus box is reading one degrees, but it feels way colder than that. Anyway, it's time to get inside and stay a little bit warmer. Here we are guiding with my EQ6R Pro, which usually guides really well. It was a little bit breezy with a few gusts of wind, so guiding is not perfect, but it's still pretty solid. And here is guiding around a day later. As you can see, the guiding is much better and my setup generally performs really good. I love this telescope mount, the EQ6R is legendary. I got my first brief bit of time under the night sky using this new off-axis guider. I realized almost immediately that I think the prism is encroaching the light path towards the sensor. There is a dark corner in the upper right of the images that were coming in. The sensor is very small and this telescope can handle a much bigger sensor. So I know it's not vignetting from the imaging setup. So I'm pretty sure the prism is in the way. So I need to adjust that. I also realised almost immediately that I forgot to take off the protective plastic film from the prism. So let's go do that now and hopefully make the adjustments needed to get rid of the dark upper right corner. This plastic pill was nowhere near as satisfying as I thought it would be, but it's now removed. You might want to use rubber tips, tweezers, it'll probably be easier. So we're going to move this prism, but first we need to move the camera further up. That way we won't hit the prism into the camera. We can then move the prism up and then tighten the screw down. Sorry about the focus. My camera decided my hands and the Allen key was more interesting, but we finally moved the prism up and hopefully this will give us some better images. So that's looking so much better now. It's way further outside of the light path and we shouldn't get any vignetting. It's so easy to adjust, you simply adjust the screw on the side here and you can move the prism up and down. Super nice and easy and nice little adjustment. So let's get this put together and hopefully get some better data this time around. I'm 
just sat here doing this video edit and I'm just kind of thinking equipment that is affordable and good and just enjoyable to use just brings a smile to your face. So why not treat yourself this holiday Christmas season and get a few stocking fillers that are good. Go on, treat yourself. The dark upper corner is gone so we successfully solved it by moving the prism and we can finally get some nice data on the Horsehead and Flame Nebula. So it looks like moving the prism made the difference that I was looking for. I no longer have a black darkened area at the top right of my image. Just double check this when you set up your Faxis Guider as I mentioned and you'll get really crispy details and perfect images. This Orfaxis Guider with its large 14 by 8 millimeter prism allows you to use a larger sensor. For me this is a really big deal. A longer focal length or field of view setup means that when you're photographing certain targets like targets with loads of dark dust you may not actually see any guide stars at all. This is also really important for SCT users. With a really long focal length, you may have little to no stars in certain regions of the sky. This is especially true when you're imaging away from the main galactic plane of the Milky Way, where there's physically less stars. So the larger prism allows you to see a larger field of view, and this will allow you to find more guide stars, which is really important for multi-star guiding that is used nowadays. So this SV Boney off-axis guider will be added to my main imaging setup, replacing my existing ZWA1. This is built really solid and it offers exactly what I want, a larger prism at an affordable price. If this is something that is appealing to you, check out the link below to an affiliate link I have down there. Affordable and good is often rare in the astronomy community, but it's getting more and more common thanks to companies like SV Boney. So thank you once again for sending this off-axis guider to me to check out and to showcase to all of you. I I really hope you've enjoyed this video and if you're interested in buying one check out the links below there'll be all the links to everything in this video down there if you like astronomy and astrophotography and you want to see more feel free to check out my playlist up there and if you want to see more future videos hit the subscribe button below and as always thank you so much for watching my name's ben you've been watching bebo astro and remember to keep looking up This is a minus four wind chill right now. It is really cold. That's why I'm wearing mitts. <laughs> the things we do for filming for YouTube. <laughs>